Hey guys, so I'm back with another video. Um, the reason for this video is because I wanted to share with you guys some other things that the narc did with his family. This is how much of a coward he is, how low down he is, how foul he is. Let me turn on this other light so that the video is not so dark. That's the light, there it is. Ooh, and I gotta do some organizing in my kitchen and get rid of some of this trash because my son and I went out to eat like two nights in a row and I have to throw away boxes from the previous night. But yeah, guys, um, this is how I know, this is how I know how powerful I am, how powerful you guys are, is when somebody gotta get a team of folk to ridicule you, to humiliate you, to bully you, to make false accusations and claims against you, to embarrass you, to hurt you, to try to cut you to the core of you. When you got to get a team of folk to do that to a person, that's how you know that person is very powerful. And that's how you know that God has so many plans for this person and that, that God created this person to be very special. See, I didn't think this about myself until I just started allowing God to do a work in me and allowing God to download certain pieces of information into me. And it took me a while to get to this point to realize this about myself. And I'm not even tooting my own horn, but... I'm sure you all can agree that all of us empaths, we have a special purpose here on this earth. Whatever that purpose is, God created us all to fulfill that purpose. And people, when they can see certain things about you that you don't see in yourself, they become jealous of you. They figure out ways to try to destroy you so that you cannot fulfill the purpose that God has for you. But here's the thing about people, and here's the thing about Satan also, is that they think they can do things and they can just get away with it. And they think they are invincible and that they can outdo God. But people will always be shown time and time again, you can never outdo God. I don't care who you are, what you are, what you do, what kind of money you got, what kind of support you have. You can never outdo God. And as I said in my previous videos, and I'm going to say in this video... This narc and his family, they forgot that there is a God in heaven. They forgot that there is a God in heaven. And they thought that they could just do what they did to me and they could just get away with it. And they could just do whatever they did to me and they suffer no consequences behind their actions. And they could just do whatever they did to me and not have any bad karma that follows behind that. I went to see my children and... Um, it was for Christmas and New Year's. And remember I told you guys in a previous video that the narc manipulated me into having sex with him just so I could see my children? Well, when I went to go see my children, the narc had me drive over to his mother's house to go drop some groceries off. And um, when I saw her, it looked like she had aged 10 years. I kid you not. And... The last time I saw her before that, it was only five, six months. But in those five, six months, she looks like she had aged 10 years. What am I saying? What is the point of me even saying all this? Is that you cannot touch God's anointed and think you're not going to suffer the consequences behind it. You're not going to touch God's anointed and think that you're not going to get dealt with. You can't touch God's anointed and think that you're not going to deal with something way worse than a human being can ever do to you. And this is why God said, vengeance is mine. This is why God says that let him handle it because he can do way more damage, guys, than what we can ever do as human beings. I could have whooped her behind. I could have whooped all day behind and landed myself in jail. Then my kids would not really, they really wouldn't have a mother then if I landed myself in jail. If I had lost my cool 
and just went berserk on all these people like I really wanted to. If I if I had done the damage I really wanted to do to these people, I would probably be in prison right now. But thank God that I had enough self-control to say, you know what, I'm going to let the authorities handle it. I'm going to let God handle it. Thank God I had enough self-control to say, you know what, this ain't the way to go because your kids is not going to have a mom. Your kid's mother will be in jail or in prison. I thought about my children and how my actions would affect my children. So I had to grit my teeth, grind my teeth, and do the things that I really did not want to do and is appear to be weak. See, they thought me not doing anything that sh that's a sign of weakness and me not doing anything is showing that I'm weak and me not doing anything is showing that I can't do nothing. But that's just not true. Like, I could have done a whole lot of things, but God said, no, you let me handle it. So I said, okay, Lord, your will be done. But this narc got his mother, his sister, his nieces, his brother-in-law, which is his sister's husband. Um, and he got some other family members from the countryside of Louisiana. They all got involved. And the mother was spreading my business all through town, saying all kind of lies about me and about my children and everything, right? But this is what they had to do. They had to team up against me. They had to recruit a whole lot of folk to go up against me. Little old me. Me. Little old me. <laughs> In my mind, I'm just like, little old me? For real? Y'all got to get all these people for me? Little old me. A person who have never showed all y'all any kind of threat physically or anything. Y'all got to get that many people. For little old me. And in my mind, I would just be like, what on God's green earth is going on here? Like, why do I got to get that many people for a person like me that is very harmless? Then after God sat me down and started showing me certain things and I, he downloaded some wisdom into me and it started to make sense why. Because I'm a whole lot powerful than I had realized not on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. Guys, this is spiritual warfare. And if y'all ain't getting this by now, then I don't know what else to say. Like, every almost every video I do just about points to that one fact. This is spiritual warfare. So all of this stuff that I went through and I'm still going through, on a spiritual level, there are so many people in the spiritual realm that's trying to defeat me. And I must be a very powerful being in the spiritual realm. I must have a lot of powers. I must be a very, very powerful, strong person in the spiritual realm. Because in the physical realm, on the, on the earth plane, I'm just like, I ain't got nothing. I'm not that powerful. I'm, you know, I ain't got nothing. I'm not, I'm not a big, giant person. Why do y'all need all these people to defeat me? But it makes sense now. Because on, on in the spiritual realm, I must be a very giant, powerful person. I must have a lot of powers and tools to do some real harm. Because everything that's done here on this earth, it, it mirrors what's done in heaven. Do you guys understand? So in the spiritual realm, I must be tearing up a lot of stuff because this man had to get a team of people. And not just a team of people, he had to get a he had to get like a triple double team of people just to try to defeat me. They lied on me, they bullied me, they rallied up against me, they tried to stop me from getting my children. I'm sure they told my children lies about me to try to bring my children wash my children against me. Um, and that's, that explains why my daughter is going through so much turmoil now. They literally messed my daughter up in the head, but my daughter is another video and another story for another day. So I'm not going to get deep into that. I remember when I was a child, I used to get bullied for being dark skinned because, you know, back then being dark skinned was not cool. Being light skinned was cool. Being light skinned was in. So they had all kind of dark skin jokes and all kind of like 
sayings and things that made me just feel all by myself. So when I was a kid, I was made to feel like I was ugly. I was made to feel like I was not beautiful. I was made to feel like I was not attractive. I was made to feel like I was not acceptable. I was not what was in because I was dark skinned. So that was another spiritual attack on me as a child. My, my stepfather, my mother's husband, which is my youngest brother's father, he molested me. And he did a whole lot of um, sexual abuse on me. But many, many years later, when my brother was old enough to understand, my sister and I shared with him that his father um, molested us and abused us sexually. And I don't know if my brother ever believed it. I don't know if my brother ever really took that in. But it got back to his father because his father spent many years in the pen, many years in prison. And when his father got out of prison, he had the nerve to confront me. You guys, he had the nerve to confront me about me telling my little brother what he did to me. Like as if I was wrong for telling the truth. That was another spiritual attack, guys. And then having to be put in foster care at a time and an age where I wasn't really ready for that. But you're never really ready for it, no matter what age you are. But I wasn't ready for that, guys. And my mother was already going through her sick spells before she passed away. So my mother was in and out the hospital at the time that I got put in foster care. And my own aunt turned me into the system. My own aunt gave me a way to the Child Protective Services. My own aunt turned me and my siblings in when she, my mother trusted her sister to babysit until she got out of the hospital. My mother trusted her sister to babysit her children until she got out of the hospital. But her sister, my aunt, took my mother's trust and broke that and violated our family circle by putting me in the system and calling and having the Berkeley police pick up me and my siblings and placing us in foster care. And after my mother trusted her and left us in her care until she got out the hospital, my aunt punked out, chickened out, and gave me and my siblings away to the Berkeley police. That was another spiritual attack, being ripped away from my mother like that, being ripped away from my family, my home, my environment, being ripped away from everything that I knew, knew to be home and being ripped away from my mother. That was another spiritual attack on me as a child. I can I could come up with so many things, guys, and it might not be coming to my mind right now, but I can come up with so many things that happened to me. How I was bullied as a kid for being dark skinned, how I was bullied because people just didn't outright outright didn't like me. And in order for me to fit in, I had to do things to get people to like me. I had to I had to do things to fit in so I wouldn't stand out so much. And I don't know if it was because of my aura or my spirit, but I always felt like I stuck out like a sore thumb as a child. I was always different than a lot of kids. I never fit in with anybody. I had to work extremely hard to fit in with everybody else. So the people that did like me, it was because I worked hard to blend in with them. But even they eventually fell out with me. You know, it was always something like I never fell out with people. People always fell out with me. Even in my adulthood, people that I created relationships with me, they always either fell out with me or left me hanging or left me. I had a really, really good friend. I'm not going to disclose her name because I believe in privacy, but her and I became friends when I was 15. And she's three years older than me, so she was 18, I think, at the time we met. And um, we created a sisterhood, a special bond. But that fell off because she could no longer handle my toxic relationship that I was sharing with her because she would always ask me what's wrong and what's going on. And I didn't want to share these things with her because I felt like it was just too much for her. It was too heavy and too much of a burden. But every time she would ask and I would be like, nah, I, I just I would rather not share with you because it's probably too much. And she would always insist that I share anyway. But as the years went on, that's what our relationship became because that, that that's what she always asked for. She always asked for 
information, like what's going on and how are you doing? And I never wanted to share that with her, but she would insist that I share anyway. So when I shared, I could literally feel in my spirit that it was just too much for her. So eventually what happened is she let me go. She stopped calling. She stopped communicating with me. Um, Every time I tried to reach out to her, she would ignore my reaching out. I literally reached out to her recently when I um, went to California last week. And I reached out to her like a week or two before just to let her know, hey, I'm coming to California to visit. And I really wanted to do that. I wanted to hang out with her for my birthday, but she never got back to me. And I know why. It's because my toxic relationship pushed her away. This was a very, very special person to me. And um, she don't want to have anything to do with me because of my narcissistic husband. Because of my narcissistic husband's toxicity. Because of the negative energy that he showered me with. I was cloaked in his negative energy. And remember I told you guys in previous videos, you know, blessings and abundance just ran away from me when I was with this man. Well, my relationships ran away from me and failed too when I was with this man. And I spent a decade or more or longer away from my family because he never supported me about my family. He never supported me. Um, with family events that I had with my family. He never he never mingled with my family. He never sat with my family. He never hung out with my family. But he made me do those things with his family. Once again, guys, this is another spiritual attack. My sister and I, who I love very dearly, she's my only biological sister. Her and I never got along as children. We don't get along as adults. We never saw eye to eye in our childhood, and we don't see eye to eye as adults. She was always ugly and nasty to me my entire life of me knowing her. I'm going to say from the time my sister could speak words, or from the time that my sister could speak full sentences, let me just say that, because I'm going to say the first two years, maybe three years of my sister's life, everything was good. So I think from the time my sister was like three and a half, All the way up until now, she was very nasty to me, mean to me, ugly to me. She would blame me for a lot of things. She would go behind my back and say things about me that's not true. Or she would go and tell my business when I would ask her not to. She would tell me what she believed I should and should not do when it came to raising my children, running my household, or making, you know, a life to uh, adult decisions. She would always make me feel like I was stupid for my decisions, but yet I was the one that was always living and doing better than her. But yet she would always make it seem like my decisions were dumb. But how are my decisions dumb when you constantly live pillar to post? How are my decisions dumb when you struggle way more than me? So I must be obviously doing something right if I'm not if I didn't have to struggle nowhere near as much as you did in your adulthood as I do mine. But to make a long story short, my sister and I, we were never really like seeing eye to eye and never really got along. <laughs> we were close at one time, but that fell off after I got married. Like after I got married, she she distanced herself away from me. And, um, and that hurt because I really needed my sister. You know, when I was married to this person, I really needed my sister to be my sister. And she chose not to be. And that hurt. So that's another spiritual attack, guys, on me. My father, my biological father, he he made an attempt to molest me, but it just didn't go far because I didn't let it. That was another spiritual attack on me. I had sat down with my father like two, three years ago, and I tried to have a conversation with him about how he made me feel as a child with his, with his, him being absent in my life and how I felt and how there were many nights I cried in my bed as a little girl wishing he was there, wishing he was coming to get me. And I hurt and I had pain and I suffered emotionally. And you know what my father did? He sat there and he stared with a blank stare, no emotion, no remorse, not even so much as a I'm sorry, daughter, for not being there for you as a child. I'm sorry that I was absent. No, nothing. He he didn't have no emotion, no remorse, nothing, no words, nothing. He just sat there with a blank stare. 
So when he did that, that made me feel even more empty, even more more of a void. It made me feel dismissed completely, like my feelings don't matter. Like basically, me as his child, he doesn't really care. That's how it made me feel. So I went through this period where I was just upset with my dad again, all over again. Like the anger that I had toward my father for all those years, it resurfaced again. That's another spiritual attack, guys, where my father was absent and he wasn't there in my life like he should have been. And he didn't really raise me or help take care of me. And then me having periods in my life where I was angry with my father and my father never filling that void for me. It's another spiritual attack. I remember one time, and this was when my husband and I um, were at the beginning of our marriage. We weren't legally married yet, but we were going to get married. And something happened where I had shared something about my son's father, my baby daddy. And um, I guess he didn't like it. So he he got mad at me, yelled at me, and just made me feel real low for that, right? My father, my 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 biological dad, came in behind my husband. Well, my fiance at the time, he came in behind, behind my fiance and defended him and made me feel low for bringing up something about my child's father. Like, like, why would you do that? Like, you're supposed to be my dad. You're supposed to be on my side. No, this man, my father, he defended my fiance and made me feel really low. Like he was backing the very man that he was telling me behind his back that I should not be with him and that I should not um, date him. The same man who he was telling me behind this man's back that this is not the man for me. But yet in his face, you're defending him toward me in his face. Another spiritual attack, guys, on me. My grandmother, who was probably one of the closest people to me in my life. I lost her at age three. My granny passed away when I was three years old. The woman who took care of me the first three years of my life. The woman who was there for me when nobody else was. She passed away when I was three. So when my granny passed away, I really started feeling that empty void then. I didn't understand death at three, but I understood that my granny was gone. I understood that. After months and weeks of my granny not coming back, that's when I was able to get, oh, my granny not coming back. Because at three, you think death is sleep. You think, oh, she's sleep. Because that's what I thought. But after months and weeks and years of... Not seeing my granny, that's when I had realized, oh, my granny is not coming back. Another spiritual attack on me, guys. The person who was really there for me passed away. More than any person or any family member in my life, she was there for me. She took care of me. She took care of me. I thought my granny was my mother at one time. And, you know, my mother got mad and corrected me and said, said she's not your mother. I am. But whose fault was that? My mother's or mine? If my mother was out running the street and doing her thing and having fun and partying while my grandmother stayed at home and took care of me, it's not my fault that I thought my grandmother was my mother. That was my mother's fault. But my mother made me feel like I was, you know, like it was a cardinal sin for me to ever call my grandmother mommy or for me to even think that, that my grandmother was my mother. But... Why make a child feel like that when you were the one who was always absent all the time, partying and running the street? Once again, another spiritual attack on me. I remember my mother telling me when I was born that um, she had a lot of complications with pushing. And um, so they had to do an emergency C-section. And they had to pull me out through emergency C-section because when she was pushing, I wasn't coming out. Uh, she couldn't get me to come out. So maybe she just was not strong enough to get me to push me out. But when I finally came out, she said I had bruises on my face from her trying so hard to push me out. Um, but I was also born with a, a bone disease or a bone deficiency where my bones were crooked on my thumbs, my toes, and my legs. And so the doctors had to break my legs so that they would grow straight. But they did not touch my thumbs. My thumbs are still lightweight crooked. And um, I think my toes and had eventually straightened out. But my legs only grew straight because they broke them to grow straight. My thumbs are probably the only part of my body that there's still evidence of my bone being somewhat deformed. So they never touched my thumbs. So my thumbs are still lightweight crooked. Even though as I got older, 
they grew somewhat straight, but there's a there's a piece of the thumb where there's a little bit of um, deformity where it's a little bit crooked still. But um, I had people who would compare my thumbs to theirs and say, Hi, my thumb is straight and yours is crooked. People will make fun of me about my thumbs. Um, so I, I had to learn how to walk with cast on my legs because my legs were broken for them to grow straight. That was a spiritual attack on me just being born. And me being developed and formed in the womb, there was a spiritual attack on me. So whatever these entities are, they did not want me to be born. And they made sure that my life was hard. And they made sure that it was hard for me to come into this world. And once I came into the world, they made sure that I went through a series of challenges in my life. Whatever this entity is, wanted to make sure that my life was hard so I can fall into drugs and alcohol and, and self-destruction, but there was a deeper will inside of me that surpassed all of that and didn't allow myself to fall into any of those pitfalls that most people fall through trying to deal with hurt and pain in their lives. So God carried me all this time, guys, but I've been under a spiritual attack my whole entire life from the time I was conceived in the womb all the way up until now and moving forward. But throughout all of that, God carried me. I'm a walking miracle because of God, because of what God is doing for me in my life, not because of anything else, not because of me. I don't get no credit for my, for me still being alive, for me still being in my right mind, for me being still being healthy. All the things I went through in my life, the only reason why I'm still in my right mind, I'm still standing, I'm still pushing forward, I'm still making it, it's because of God. The Holy Spirit has been covering me. God has been watching over me, been carrying me, been stepping through for me. Well, I'm going to come to the end of the video here. But those are some things I wanted to share with y'all about my life and about dealing with the narc. Uh, how far I've come going through all those things in my life. And I only shared probably not even a quarter of all the things I went through in my life. But I shared enough to fit in this video to last at least 30 minutes. That was like a crumb of my life story. I shared a crumb of my life story with y'all. There's so much more. But I will share more with you guys over time as I do more videos over time. I hope this video helps you all, give you guys encouragement and inspiration that whatever you go through in your life, as long as you trust God and follow the Lord, he will carry you. He will get you through. And that God is real and that God is the miracle. And that God uses us to be his miracle. I see you guys in the next video. Peace and blessings to you all. Later.